Hi everyone. Oh my god, I am dying right now. I thought I was going to have a nice, fun day off. Well, no, the weather is conspiring against me. It is all like dreary and dark and raining outside, so <laughs> screw that. And you think it would be nice and cool because of the rainy weather. It's not. It is boiling. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but our air conditioning is out and we're not getting it fixed until fall for some reason. So right now I have set up shop in the basement and <laughs> I am in our old uh, toy slash book room right here and I have cleverly concealed all the piles of our old toys and you can just see this breaking bookshelf behind me. <laughs> with Anyway, the first video I'm doing right now is just uh, kind of quick reviews of all the books I've read in the past week, which is the first week of July, plus a couple extra days, but who cares? That's not important. Uh, anywho, just going to start off. First book I read is this. These Old Shades by Georgette Hare. Uh, this is one of Georgette Hare's earlier books. This was the one I think that uh, really was her claim to fame. It wasn't until this book that she really became as popular as, you know, she was, as she was. I can't even talk. <laughs> uh, this is not one of her Regency romances for which she was most popular. This is set a little bit earlier in the Georgian era. And I was expecting not to really like this book that much. For one, I'm not as crazy about her Georgian era books as her other ones. They're a little bit more over the top. I think um, the men are a little bit more foppish and not as uh, attractive to me. The women are more like damsels in distress. So I don't know. I didn't think I was going to like this. Plus it features pretty big age difference between the two main characters. They're the hero, uh, what is his name, Justin, the Duke of Avon, is in, is past 40. And the heroine, if, I don't know, if, let's just pretend this is her, Leone, is 19. So, and she's also his ward. Well, they only meet each other in this, so it's not as if she knew him growing up or anything. So that is a little bit squicky. But all in all, I actually, I still thought it was really funny. Uh, I didn't let the age difference bother me that much because I didn't really pay as much attention to the romance anyway as I did to everything else that was going on, which I really enjoyed. Uh, and, you know, I think it was also due to my really, really low expectations that I was able to like this book as much as I did. Uh, I would give it... Uh, 7 out of 10. It's not my favorite Georgette Hare book, but it's a pretty good one, and it's really is one of her most popular. I, I don't think it should necessarily be that high up, but whatever, that's just my opinion. Anywho, <laughs> the next book is another Agatha Christie Poirot novel. Just, I don't know if you saw, if you see my book for my June book reviews, you'll know I am addicted to Agatha Christie right now and it was during this time period because I'm reading the books in chronological order uh, she was just on a Poirot kick and she was writing Poirot after Poirot book um, this one is about a did I even say the title? it's Sad Cypress by the way because I don't know what I'm doing I'm rambling uh, this one is about a woman who's on trial for poisoning both her aunt and uh, her aunt's, uh, not her ward, but like a girl that uh, her aunt liked a lot and was kind of like a companion to her. Uh, this, and it starts off with a trial of her, and then it kind of flashes back to everything from the beginning and how she got to to that place. It is, if you've ever read any of Dorothy L. Sayers, Peter Whimsey books, this has some parallels with her first um, Harriet Vane book, which is Strong Poison. And that, in that book, uh, Harriet Vane is on trial for murder, 
and Lord Peter Whimsey, who is the detective of that series, falls in love with her, and he is determined to find evidence of her innocence, or to prove someone else guilty, at least. Uh, in this book, it is another woman, uh, Eleanor Carlyle, is the one on trial, and the man who falls in love with her was her aunt's doctor, Dr. Peter Lord. So, <laughs> the name, I don't know if that was, I think it was intentional that it was an homage to Strong Poison. He is not a detective in this one, though. He wants to save her, so he enlists Poirot's help to get Eleanor off the hook. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this book. It's one of my favorite Poirots, but what's interesting about it is I almost feel that Poirot didn't even need to be in it. <laughs> but uh, he was the detective character. He did not take center stage, though. It was really more the relationships and everything going on with the other characters like Eleanor and Dr. P. Lord, Eleanor's ex fiance the aunt, and the other murder victim, Mary Gerard, and everything like that was really good. Uh, it has a romance in it, but it has, it doesn't have one of those really cheesy, like, oh, everything is fine and dandy now, all of a sudden at the end, endings like some of other, uh, Christie's other books that, with romances. This one is a much more realistic, hopeful, but slightly, not exactly bittersweet, but not all of a sudden everything is perfect and dandy ending, so... I highly recommend this book to any cozy mystery fan. I give it a 10 out of 10. Next book I read is Foundling by D.M. Cornish. And uh, I started this book back in February. I don't even know exactly why I bought it. It seemed interesting at the time, I guess. I don't know. It's, it was in the young adult section. It's about uh, a boy in like some magical world who is a foundling or an orphan. And then uh, as he is going to go like get a job, uh, things go wrong and all this stuff starts happening. And it has monsters and crap like that. I thought this book was so boring. I, this, you can, I said I started it months ago. And then I put it down because I wasn't getting into it. And so I kind of forced myself as the time went by to just read little by little, hoping that it would get more interesting. It really didn't for me, at least. I feel like it was a little bit too juvenile almost for my taste. I don't think there's anything in it that would qualify it to be young adult rather than, you know, for younger middle grade readers. I don't know why it is considered a young adult book. I think it would be more appealing to younger children, to be honest. So this book, I don't know, is not horrible, but I didn't really like it. I mean, I don't think I'm in the target audience. I'm just going to give it a 5 out of 10, just smack dab in the middle. Next, I have another Agatha Christie Poirot novel. This one is One, Two, Buckle My Shoe. In this one, Poirot's dentist is found shot in the head, and there's this whole thing. At first, it looks like suicide, but then it looks like it's murder and that there are larger uh, forces at play, some stuff going on in the international front, like with politics and all that crap. I've never really liked those elements of Christie's books. I tend to just like stuff that doesn't have to do with spies or anything thriller-esque. I just like the standard cozy mystery. <laughs> so this book is not one of my favorites. It wasn't bad. It was decent. I, Again, you know, I didn't like all of that international pre-war kind of crap going on. Uh, I thought it was a little bit kind of draggy at times, so I'm going to probably give it a 6 out of 10 rating. And next, my second to last book is The Blue Sword by Robin McKinley. This is considered a classic fantasy book. He has a new very, oh, wrong side, Medal Honor Award right there. Uh, I heard, have heard so many, or read, pretty much not heard, so many good things about it on the internet. It is about um, a girl in a fantasy world. It's very similar to kind of colonial 
era England where uh, she is from where it's called the homeland and they're in a colony called Damar I think is what it is and then there's a uh, kind of tensions rising between all of the various cultural groups in that country it turns out that she is like destined to carry this thing called the blue sword and she is going to help win this conflict or something like that I was surprisingly disappointed by this I had really high expectations after everything I read and it sounded so cool and it's considered I mean it's from 1982 and still like a really loved book so I'm like wow this is a classic it stood the test of time it has a medal on it I thought it was pretty dull uh, in the beginning, the setup in the world building, everything was really interesting. I'm like, oh my god, I can't wait for this to get going. This is going to be so cool. Can't wait to read about this. But once the setup was finished, once um, the heroine, Harry, is kind of kidnapped by this, let's pretend it's these people on the cover, this group, the hill folk of that country, uh, it got really really boring for me it was just like she is adapting to the group's ways and everything just comes so easy to her just screamed out kind of like Mary Sue to me blah 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 everything that she's doing she's it's just so easy and she's becoming like one of them and that's going on and on and on with no actual like plot developments going on during that time once we get to the end it it picks up a little bit and it was interesting again but I felt like it was too little too late I, I don't feel like it's good enough to just have a good beginning and a good ending and not worry about the middle I think the middle is actually one of the most important parts of the book if you want to keep people interested if otherwise they're not maybe gonna make it to the end of the book if you lose their interest in the middle so I don't know I, uh, this book I would give probably a six also because it has a good setup, really good world building, and then it, it, a decent ending, but all of that plotty, plotting, I should say, middle just kind of killed it for me. So six out of ten, kind of a disappointment. And I have my last book of the week, Evil Under the Sun by Agatha Christie, another Poirot one. Sorry to bore you people, someone on my blog has put a comment that she's sick of Agatha Christie and that I should do some classic Victorian authors or Jane Austen. Well, first of all, I replied that I have already reviewed all of Jane Austen's stuff, so she obviously has not been reading everything on my blog. And second, I review what I want. Okay, if she wants to read those other books and write about them, she can read them. That's what I feel. Uh, this is another Poirot on vacation novel. And uh, similar to the, was it The Triangle at Rhodes, which is a short story featured in, crap, what was it? Uh, Murder in the Muse, I think. And uh, the other, another novel, um, Death on the Nile. <laughs> both of those Poirot on vacation novels they feature a love triangle with a married couple of some sort and then another woman and they're all similar in a way uh, this was I think it was a really it was a good book but the one thing that bothered me was the similarity to those other two stories and I guess Christy had problems with like other women and her husbands both of her husbands um, lives at some point or another so that was probably why she enjoyed or probably not even enjoyed <laughs> why she did write love triangles like this as often as she did but I feel like maybe I just needed more space in between reading those other two so similar stories because it was kind of just it, I mean it was done it had its own spin on it I'm not gonna say it was a carbon copy of the other two works but all the parallels and stuff is just too similar for me so soon. I mean, maybe that's my fault that I didn't space out the books, but sorry, I can't help myself. <sighs> it, I needed something a little bit different. So this book, maybe if I had not read the others when I did, I would maybe have given it a 9 or 10. But 
as it is right now, it's probably going to be about an 8. And that is it for all of my books of this past week. Uh, stay tuned if you want to my Harry Potter reviews.